I'm Jessica Moore, and my new book is called The Whole Singing Ocean. This book, which was a long time coming, was sparked by a story a boat builder told me a long time ago about his encounter with a whale when he was on board a French countercultural boat school called the École en Bateau. The École operated from 1969 to 2000 and was based on the ideals of 68 and on a certain interpretation of some of the theories of Foucault. Um, the school offered this incredible adventure and break from conventional life. So children would go for anywhere from five months to two years and be on board this school, traveling around, learning about ancient civilizations and um, just having an incredible adventure. Part of its aim was to abolish the separation between adults and children. And to that end, the children were the crew. So they learned how to navigate and they learned how to tend to manage upkeep of the ship. It's also a reluctant memoir. So the book steers me towards pieces of my own childhood and towards pieces of my mother's story. Um, it pulls in threads of ecological grief. The plight of the oceans is a strong component in the book. And at the farthest reach of the book, maybe, is um, a discussion of binaries, dualities, how it might be possible to hold two very different things, rapture and pain, for example, at once. There was a great deal of synchronicity and intuitive following for me in the writing of this book. Of the first draft was written while I was on a self-created residency with three marvelous minds, three other writer friends in Spain. And we were staying in a 15th century building on a Spanish hillside with not much else around, overlooking a jewel of a lake in the valley below. I was writing on loose leaf paper. And what amazed me during the revision process was that looking back on that stack of, that first stack of loose leaf pages, I could see that everything was there already. All these other threads and themes that I so carefully wanted to place later in a conscious way had already instinctively been present. So that really told me something about the magic of the first draft. The book devours, collects, and incorporates as we go, and story itself becomes a sort of character, someone or something that I can dialogue with in the process of writing, and someone very, very hungry. So I'm going to read a piece from just after the boat builder began to tell me more about his memories of that time as he himself was excavating the memories of them, trying to make sense of the later information that he discovered. And you'll hear a little piece from story as a character as well. The boat builder tells me about his arrival to the Ecole en Bateau. It was my first time in a plane and I was alone. Some boys my age met me at the dock. They didn't speak English. We motored the small green and white skiff to the Carrick Venn, which was everything I had imagined. White top sides and dark green bulwarks, a raw salt stained deck and rich red tan bark sails. I was now a child of the sea, he says. Below deck, Prokofiev was playing and now every time he hears Montagues and Capulets, bam, he's back. That first night, the boat builder dove with the other children from the prow. The crew swam naked, but I was shy. I learned to eat liver, cow's tongue, pig's feet. Every night, we sipped hot cocoa thickened with cornstarch. That taste is forever embedded in my memory. There were no sleeping quarters for the kids. Leo and Bernard had their births, and the rest of us laid out bedrolls wherever we found room. Some slept on deck under the stars among the sailbags. The net below the bowsprit was best. 
The children were rulers, were golden, removed from every signpost, every repair, and from there they could see wild storms roll in, and from there they could see humpbacks swim, and from there they could see the dark movements of the moon and of transparent overlapping selves. They were creating a new world. I thought I was free, said one. Nothing is sharp, nothing is black and white. God, some things are, they have to be. Said Foucault, don't ask me who I am or tell me to stay the same. Yet, someone in their testimony called the wreck the perfect trap. Cast out of the garden, zebrafish, sea fans, jellyfish, urchins, yellow purple, blazing, blazing garden, garden, fronds waving, secret rhythms, moray eels, coral, whales, childhood. I never saw it. It never happened to me. He meant the worst of it. He was spared the worst. The boat builder saw the odd requirements and thought this must be just how they do it in Europe. Standing under the outdoor shower, an older boy's hands on you. I wonder now if language was part of what saved him from worse, the distance between English and French like the sound of a far-off hammer across the bay, sound hitting two beats after the swing. Symphonies, dolphins, archaeology, islands, he packed up that perfect time in boxes even his wife knew nothing about, stuffed them into the coach house, now he knows it was no perfect time. Still, the freedom. I have stood at the edges of the earth and wanted to go just a little further where I might catch the rapture racketing past. He has been to the ends of the earth, and how could he now be content with the crummy suburbs, the subways and Walmarts, a piña colada at Chile's the most cosmopolitan thing around? He has sailed a boat across the world. An early taste of adventure can wreck you for life. I, I'm following you. I'm trying anyway. Sorry about the times when I try to take the lead. Story, only one of us can lead. I, I was never any good at ballroom. Story, I'm like the sea, you know. I, I was afraid in the night and it seemed to me the ghost was water. Story, what could water possibly want from you? I, that's just it. It is neither caring nor desiring and that in itself can be fearsome. Story, you think water does not hunger? Remember, what haunts you wants a form that is like none other?